Being able to visually inspect molecular structures is a basic yet crucial skill for practical applications. Training your eyes to recognize the structural fragments and identifying similarities is essential in chemistry. This example is meant to sharpen your observational skills and enhance your ability to compare molecular structures. We will practice the simple task by looking at these two molecules, which both interact with this protein at the middle. The code for this example is available on GitHub with the link in the description. First, I'll guide you through the essential steps to install the software requirements. If you don't have MATLAB yet, head over to mathworks.com to get your copy. Once you have MATLAB, ensure your Python version is compatible by checking this MathWorks website. I'm using version 3.11 for this example. Now, next, visit the Python website to download and install the appropriate version. Scroll down, and as you can see, my version is right here. After installing Python, open it and, uh, and run these two lines of code, which I made available in the description as well. This allows you to find your Python installation path. Now, copy this path as uh, you will need it in the MATLAB code that you're going to use uh, later. This enables MATLAB to interface with Python, allowing to us to call Python functions and utilize Python libraries directly from within MATLAB. Actually, installing such Python library is our next requirements. We'll install RDKit, which is a chemoformatics package. Simply copy this command and run it in your command prompt to install, uh, to install RDKit. With these steps completed, you are all set to run this example. To access this example, visit the GitHub link in the description. Download the code and unzip the folder. Inside, double-click the MATLAB file to open the live script. Now, the live scripts begin with a list of requirements and installation instructions, as I just explained. The code then uh, shows you how to visualize the glucose and luciogluflozin, which is a sodium uh, glucose co-transporter inhibitor. Explore practical as uh, aspects of this example and try out the exercises provided at the end of it. Simply click the run button to see, uh, to see it in, in action. The motivation behind this example is how to tackle type 2 diabetes. It is about visual inspection of D-glucose and luciogluflozin, which reveals similarities and distinct structural differences that are key to their interaction with the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 SGLT2 protein that you see at the middle. D-glucose is a natural substrate for SGLT2. This transporter facilitates glucose reabsorption in kidneys. In contrast, luciogluflozin, which is a synthetic compound, is designed to inhibit SGLT2, thereby it reduces glucose reabsorption and promotes it, uh, its uh, excretion in urine. The structural modifications in luciogluflozin allow it to effectively bind and block this transporter. This highlights the importance of molecular design in therapeutic interventions for diabetics uh, management. Now, let's look closer at these molecules. The first thing I notice is the similarity between the two. The glucose moiety in luciogluflozin mimics glucose, allowing it to interact with the glucose binding site of SGLT2. But looking closer, you see that the endocyclic oxygen atom is replaced by a sulfur atom. We don't want to discuss why exactly, but we want to see and notice these modifications that aim to optimize the drug's uh, therapeutic profile. Now let's zoom out on this structure. Rationally, this molecule is designed in uh, three fragments. First, we have the glyphlosin core, this part consists of uh, glucose moiety and a phenyl ring. As we'll see later, this core structure repeats in uh, other glyphlosin uh, candidates as well. 
Now, the other non-glucose part of this molecule, which in general called uh, a glycone, is this highlighted part. These segments usually have some aromatic rings in them. Finally, we have the linker that breaches the two parts of the molecule. In this case, the linker is a simple methylene group. Now, just remember that any change in any of these three fragments will change the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the new candidates. As an exercise, I want you to look at these other glyphosins, identify the three main components in them, and see the similarities and differences. For example, comment on how the linker in canafloglosin is different from the other two, or Notice the chlorine and fluorine substitutions on the phenyl rings and think about what might be the reasoning behind it. Now, let's get back to our MATLAB code. Uh, you may say, well, why do I even need MATLAB for this exercise when I can draw any of them uh, with, with other tools like ChemDraw or GaussView or others? Well, the answer is in the automation and scalability of your work. We are in the era of generative AI and big data. Imagine you have a database of thousands of small molecules, while ChemDraw and GaussView and other tools are excellent for individual molecule visualizations and manipulations. They lack the robust automation capabilities that MATLAB provides. With MATLAB, you can effectively load uh, such extensive databases perform complex searches and instantly visualize any molecule based on a specific criteria. This level of automation not only saves time, but also enhances accuracy and consistency, especially when dealing with large databases. We'll cover this in our next video. Now, think about how this exercise can help you to search for new potential drug candidate, like the ones you just saw. How do you generate the molecular library? How do you perform substructure searches? And most importantly, how do you automate your search without having to look at uh, and visually inspect every molecule in your library? This is what we are going to cover in our next video. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep learning and stay ahead.